Okay, everyone. So, in this lesson, we're going to use the same advisor report that we created in the previous tutorial. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to um, parameterize it. So, the example I gave in the previous video was um, currently with this data set, I have five lecturers and six students. So, it's not much and it's a one pager report. But what if I had a thousand lectures and I had 30,000 students. If I had to print this, which we call a list, all we'd have is a 500 page document with all of this information and your manager would look at it and say, but what must I do with this? So you need to be able to limit your reports or provide more useful information in some way. Okay, so here, what we're going to do with this report is we're going to introduce a user parameter. And the user parameter will allow us to actually limit this report. Let me give you an example. Let's say here, I didn't want to see all the lecturer information. I only wanted to see Teresa Marx's information. What could I do to limit this report? Now, the first thing you could have done is you can go to the data model. And on my data model, I can double click my query and there's the query now in here instead of just saying only where the student FID is equal to the faculty FID I can also say and where the faculty dot FID is equal to one remember number one that's Teresa marks so if I click that now and I go to my paper design look at what happens do you see I only see um, Teresa Marx's information. If I want someone else's information and I go to query, I could say, for example, two. So now I will only see Mark Zulin's information. Do you see that? And the student he's advising. But what if I don't want to do this? I don't want to hard code a value here, right? I don't want to hard code a value here. What you're going to do is you can create your own user parameter. Right. So here, instead of hard coding a value, I'm going to say colon because a user parameter is an, a construct that exists in your object navigator. And if you remember back to my forms, colons are what I used to tell the compiler to look for this on my object navigator and I'm going to say I want to create a parameter that's called p underscore fid and I click OK. Look at what it says there. The query q1 has created the bind parameters pfid and if I click OK and I go to my object navigator do you see all of a sudden under user parameters I have a new parameter pfid and if I run, or if I go to the paper design, right? look at what is happening. A little form pops up and it says, what value do you want for this parameter PFID? And if I put one and I say, run this form, do you see it chose me? Teresa Marks. If I go and I run the layout again, and I say, this time I want to see Colin Langley, do you see there? So now I'm a, this is becoming more useful to a user. Now let's say I'm a normal end user and I call this form from wherever it's stored. And I say, oh, I think Teresa Marks, her FID is 11. I run it. Do you see it's blank? Why? Because I don't have a lecturer. With FID 11. Do you see that? I only have up to five. So if the user enters an invalid value, do you see that the report produces no information? So now, how can I make this slightly more useful? 
how can I make this parameter more useful? If I right click on the parameter and I bring up the properties, do you see that you can introduce a list of values for your parameter? If you click on this property, right, and you click on this little gray button, it actually asks me, I can create a parameter list of values. There's two methods to this. You can either use static values or you can use a select statement. Now, static values is when you have a parameter that isn't going to change very often. So a, nor a typical example that I use is, let's say you have a sales report and on your sales report, you have three parameters. You have the date, the start date for the sales report, the end date for the sales report, and you have a third parameter, province. Right? So this is a provincial sales report. Now, in our case in South Africa, we have nine provinces. That is unlikely to change anytime soon. So what you could do is, for example, here, you could hard code your provincial values. So depending on how the information is stored in the database, you might have GP for Gauteng. You might have KZN for um, KwaZulu-Natal, etc. So you could do that. You could hard code your nine values and those nine values will never change. And here, the option restrict list to predetermined values is ticked. In other words, when the form, when the user runs this report, they are unable to enter their own values. It only allows them to pick one of the values in the drop down list because this is ticked. This option here is ticked. In this case, though, um, we are going to do a select statement. In other words, when the um, report is run, the select statement will fetch the latest information from a particular table in the database and populate your list of values with this information. So this makes more sense for the faculty because as you hire new lecturers, you want to be able to see their information in this drop down list. OK, and you can use your query builder. So here I can select the faculty table. And what do I need from the faculty table? I need faculty ID, FID. I click OK. There it generates it. Alternatively, you could have just typed it, select FID from faculty. Right. I click OK. And do you see here the date type of the parameter doesn't match the date type of its source column? Why? Why am I getting that error? Look at the properties of my parameter. Do you see the default properties it was created was, was data type character width 40. If I go and I describe the faculty table, right? Do you see faculty ID is a number with a width of six? Do you see that? So it's telling me that this faculty ID value is a different data type to the parameter I'm using. So what do I need to do? I go here, I select number, and the maximum length or width of that number is six. So now I can go back to my list of values. I can go to my select statement, and I can actually redo it. Faculty. I click OK. Do you see it accepts it? No problem. Now look at what happens when I run my um, form, uh, my uh, report. Do you see now it's populating the parameter with the select statement values that it's pulling from the database. So now I can actually select a value and it's a valid value that will always return some kind of data. Do you see that? And the user if they try to type, it takes to the nearest value, but they cannot enter their own value. Do you see that? Okay. Now, is this a bit better? Yes. Is it that much better? Probably not. For example, I'm a typical user. Let's say I work at student admin and a student comes to me and says, um, uh, 
I need to know this information about my advisor. And they're like, and the, the, the user, the student admin person is going, okay, who's your lecturer? And they say, Colin Langley. And now the, the user runs this report, brings it up here and now looks at this and says, okay, who is Colin Langley? Is it number one, two, three, four, or five? I don't know. And it's even worse if it's 50 values that you see there, or 100 values, or 500 values, depending on the amount of lectures that are in this university. Okay, so what do you want to do here? You want to maybe make this a little bit more useful to your user. So what can I do? Okay, I can go back to this value and bring up the property inspector, go back to my list of values. But now, instead of only giving the FID, I'm going to give also the last name and the first name of the lecturer. But you might be asking, but Mr. Tarasha, how are you selecting three values and returning it only to one parameter. A parameter is like a variable. A variable can only hold a single value. If you try to put a second value in there, what happens? The first value gets overwritten by the second value. Whenever you do a select statement for a parameter list of values, the value that gets, you can call as many values as you want, but the one that gets returned to the parameter is the very first one that you're selecting. Okay, so if you're calling multiple values, make sure that the one you want to return is the first one that you call. Okay, I click OK, I run. Now look at that, isn't that a little bit more useful? Right, and again, you can filter it based on the primary key, the FID, right. Now I can see, oh, Colin Langley's number three, I run it. If um, you go back and you untick this option, restrict the list to predetermined values, look at what happens. Do you see, I can still see it in the drop-down menu, but for example, the user could type in their own invalid value and it will accept it. Okay. The advantage of this is that to some degree you can use it to filter. Okay. But it doesn't always work. So be very careful of allowing your user to type in their own values because they can still enter invalid values there. Okay. But again, this option will depend the, on the kind of report that you're creating. I mean, if you are doing a date-based report, you don't necessarily want to fetch dates from the database. If I want a sales report between the 1st of May and the 31st of May, I should be able to select, I want that range. I should be able to type in those values, as long as I'm typing in the dates in the correct format. Okay, so, it really depends on what you want to do. Okay, now, if you look here, this form that it brings up, it's not the best form. It's not the most elegant form. I mean, PFID, what is that? Is your end user supposed to know that? Now, if I do a parameterized form, is there a way that I can actually customize that little form that displays. Actually, there is. What you can do is you can use tools and go down to the parameter form builder. Now here, it gives you the title, the hint line, a status line, and then the different parameters that you have. Now, on this form, all of these that you see here, desk type, desk name, desk format copies, these are system uh, parameters. I would recommend not including these. You include parameters by 
selecting them. But by default, it's selected the one user parameter that it finds. So look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, this is my advisor report. And the hint line is going to say, select a lecturer ID to generate a report for. And I have that. And here, faculty ID. Okay. I click OK. Now look at what I'm seeing here. Advisor report, select a lecture to generate a report for faculty ID. And look here, do you see, up until now, we've never used this fifth view. And the fifth, the reason is that the fifth view is for your paper parameter form. You only use this if you are going to include a parameter or more than one parameter on your report. And this is like a mini form. It's very, very limited. So you could um, move things around. You can use text, draw lines, draw circles if you want to. Um, you can even, for example, insert an image into this uh, miniaturized form. So for example, there's the Northwoods logo once again. Okay, so just remember, you cannot make it bigger than this. So you do have a limitation to what, how many parameters you can have on one report. Okay, so now if I run my form, oh, my report, sorry, do you see, there it is, there's the logo, there's the new things. So it looks just a little bit nicer and is a little bit more useful. Okay, and it will still work. Just to show you, this still does work if you're running the web layout. So if I run the web layout, it asks me to select a lecture. And if I run it, we get a problem. Okay, um, the reason for this is because of the space that I had in the name. I forgot to change that. So that's my fault. Uh, so especially in 10 this can be very temperamental. The HTML uh, versions of the reports can be a little temperamental if you do not have a report server set up in your organization. For these videos, unfortunately, I don't have a report server. Um, my poor little laptop is already overwhelmed with the virtual machine and the video recording software and everything. You can't hear it, but the fans are running full speed. Okay, but that is a parameterized version of the report. So it's a little bit more useful. Uh, you can generate a lot more interesting reports using parameters that your managers will find useful. Okay, and that's the end of this lesson and what you need to know for chapter seven, lesson B.